Hello, welcome back. I'm Jeff Byers, and I'm your instructor for Andy 150. And we are going to model this scene. A table and chairs and a decorative dish and some round decorative spheres. We'll have a floor, maybe some walls. We'll just have to see where this takes us, but we're this is basically what we're going to be modeling today. So please watch any intro um, videos that I have posted online first on Canvas for Module 1. Please watch all introduction videos on Maya so you know how to uh, rotate around in the scene, how to go from one orthographic to the other by, hold, by hitting the space bar. So, um, and just kind of navigation in general, understanding uh, the toolbar, the main menu bar, the shelf, uh, the channel editor, okay, and the uh, tools that you'll need to uh, kind of navigate in Maya. If you haven't watched those, you're gonna be really lost in this video, so please watch those first. Those are all the introduction videos that I have posted uh, in module one before you start the assignment. So watch all uh, videos before you start this, this assignment. All right, so this is our scene. This is what we're gonna create. And we have, this is a one of two part series where we, we talk about modeling. Um, you get uh, basically the whole idea about this, even though this is a very, very simple scene, uh, this will help get us started on how we tackle a just regular uh, shapes and how to break it down to how to model and scale. So this is really about how to use primitives, um, how to scale, how to move around, how to manipulate vertex vertices, and um, and uh, basically that's just practicing. Um, and so we're just going to create this scene and then um, we'll end up with something pretty cool in the end. Hopefully you'll think so. And so go, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're just going to kind of start where you might end up starting, uh, which, which is basically with uh, nothing in your scene. Okay, so we're going to create everything from scratch. Um, we're going to be using primitives. So. The idea here is to make sure that you are set in your shelf area. Make sure you have poly modeling showing. Now, if you have surfaces and start working with surfaces, they're totally different. Um, they also are all they're also called NURBs. Okay, these surfaces are nothing like polygon modeling. Okay, so we're going to talk about more of that in the class um, when you guys when we meet on Wednesday but surfaces are totally different. We're only gonna focus on poly modeling, which is what we uh, basically do in gaming or film. A lot of times some people will use surfaces and then turn them into polygons to run in games, that's fine, but we're gonna focus just on poly modeling, okay? And I'm gonna show you the tools as we go along. We're gonna just taking it slow. So in our scene, if you don't see the outliner, okay, Everything can be moved around, so I can take that outliner and, and un, you know, unlink it, okay? So, um, or you can shut it off, and if you find that you don't have it, um, you, you want to go to Windows and go to Outliner, and that's where it is right there, okay? All right, so let's see. I can go ahead and put it in there. Um, also... If you get kind of messed up and you're not sure what happened with something, um, you can always go to Panels, Perspective, and click on Perspective. Or you can also click on uh, this guy right here. Let's say um, I'm missing my four views. I don't know what happened. You can click on that. Also, when you create something and you hit the A key, it will, or excuse me, the F key, it will focus on it. So if I click any one of these, which is called a primitive, I click on a, a sphere and I hit the F key, it will focus on it. Now wherever I have my um, marking menu or my mouse uh, icon, um, okay, I can hit the F key and it will focus on the, the object into that window, okay, into the viewport. 
These are called orthographic viewports, okay? That means we can see the top and the side, the front and the side, okay? All right? And if I hit the space bar with, if I have my mark, you know, my mouse in a certain uh, orthographic view, if I hit the space bar, it'll enlarge it to that viewport. I hit the space bar again, it will go back to the four views. And then if I hit the space bar again in that particular viewport, it will open up all the way into the viewport so you can get a, a closer look. Okay? So just kind of focus on that. Another thing you guys can work on is, is the uh, navigation cube where you can go to the top. A lot of students will do that. I rarely use this because I, I like to be able to go just pop back and forth and I'm pretty quick at that. It actually takes more time to do this than it does just hitting the space bar and going to the different viewports. And you can get pretty quick at that too as well. Anyway, if you lose kind of where you're at, you can go back to panels, perspective, perspective. Okay. Okay, I'm in perspective so I can rotate around again. You can see that everything's good. Okay. Now, um, again, part of learning uh, 3D is the 3D axes. We have X, Y, and Z. You usually want to model where the object is facing you, okay, in the Z. And how do I know I'm in the Z? Well, you can look down in the left-hand corner and see that there's a Z facing me. And I want to usually model that way, okay? And if I want to get rid of something, I can just hit the delete key, okay? So I'm going to hit delete, okay? And um, uh, usually we uh, use references. Um, it's very hard to get a reference of a side view of a, a chair or a front view of a chair or a front view of a table. I already know what a chair or a table looks like. And normally I would bring references in. Uh, that's very important. Uh, but chairs and tables, they're very basic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to model around what I've already created. And you can just follow along with me. Okay, so we're going to start with the table since that's the, that's the easiest one. Now you notice I went down over uh, in underneath the channel. Okay, you notice I have to have something selected. Okay, so if I select it, you can see that um, we can see that that's a cube. Now that really isn't um, one solid object. I've just combined it. These are several uh, separate objects. So um, I combined it. So if I hold down the space bar and I go to, and I'm holding it down right now, just holding it down, I go to mesh, I can go to separate. So I can separate all these pieces into one. Okay, right. Okay, so we also have icons. Okay, we have extract, we have mirror, uh, we have smooth, we have reduce. These are all uh, tools that you guys can use. They're also, and these are just fast, quick. Uh, a shelf is basically where you can put uh, tools in, actions, and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that later how you can organize this and actually create your own shelf uh, with your, uh, your favorite modeling tools. Okay, we'll eventually get to that point. Um, so these are all separate pieces, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything. Now again, you're, you're not here yet, you know? So I'm gonna add these to my layers and I'm gonna template it, okay? And just basically help you. I'm going to go to the top view. So um, if you're not quite sure what a top view is, okay, let's just say we're in here and you want to go to the top view, you can click on this if that's easier for you. Now the middle mouse button, if I scroll in like this, you can see that we're in top perspective though. It's really not giving us a top view. It's a top perspective, okay? I prefer, okay, so if I rotate around, I prefer to use the orthographic, orthographic view, excuse me, so I can see it without distortion, okay? When I go to perspective, and if I go to the top view, it distorts the object, okay? You can see by the legs, it distorts it. So perspective is great for perspective, right? But orthographic shows us a little bit more, 
okay when you we're going to use all these views okay it's very important I'm gonna hit the F key like I showed you just kind of get everything focused in all right there we go so there's our top view our front view and our side view so what we want to do is we want to create a cube okay so I'm gonna create a cube it creates it in the center another thing I need to talk about is what's what are all these little squares these this is called the grid this grid gives us some um, point of reference as far as scale goes okay we are in centimeters not feet okay but what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider these cubes to be one foot okay so what I want to do and this helps me with um, with measurement okay so I'm gonna make a four foot wide table as you can see you got one two three four grid units across we're just gonna consider that four feet and then we got one two three four five six seven eight okay down so we got a four by eight foot table yes that's a huge table that's okay so I created that cube what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the R key and in the middle we can see that if I were to click on this cube here okay with my left mouse button I can go and scale it non-proportionately in the X as you can see down here in the left hand corner bottom left hand corner you can see that's X all right and if I want to stretch it this way I am going to uh, stretch or scale this up in the Z okay now since you don't have anything really to follow what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow basically the grid so one two three four up one two three four down you just kinda wanna follow that scale so four cubes wide by eight cubes long okay all right and even if I didn't have this in here, I could still do that. You can still see that I can get that fit in there pretty good. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the table. I'm going to turn this on so I can have, so I can kind of show you what I've got here. And I'm going to move that up like that. Okay. And so I'm going to go one, two, three. So one, two, three, that's three feet, 36 inches up. That's a little bit tall for a table. So I brought it down just a little bit, as you can see, All right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that cube that you created up in the middle of this other, okay? Now, you're not gonna see that, so I'm just gonna close that. You're gonna see something like this. Now, one, another thing I want you to do is hit the four key. When you hit the, the four key, it turns it invisible, or basically you can see through it, okay? But you can still see the cube. And you know when I click on it, it turns green, and when I click off of it, it turns blue. That means that it is no longer active, and I really can't, if I hit the R key for scale, and the E key for rotate, and the W key for move, it does nothing. I have to have it selected so I gotta click on it and when I hit the W key that lets me move it E key rotate and R key now you've learned all that in other videos okay if you haven't watched them again please watch them so I want you to kind of scale that down to a thickness of a table that you think now I'm going to use this as a reference the one I already created to get uh, the, to get it just right now if you don't get it perfect it's okay because you don't have anything to go by you don't have a reference like I do so you just get it as close to watching my video as you can. It, it's okay if it's not if it's too thick, too thin. You're not going to be graded off. Okay, just do the best you can. Get as close as you can. Okay, it's no no worries. All right, we're practicing basically. This is just a practice run here. Okay, you will turn this in. You will light it, but you're going to learn a lot here. So if I go back, hit the space bar, go back to the top view. You can see we've got the top view done. And now we've got the side view. So we've got the top of the table completely finished. Okay, that's great. Now we're getting scale established. Scale is established now. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is work on the legs. Okay. So I'm going to rotate in the perspective. Now I'm, I'm just hitting the space bar. 
and just have my mouse cursor in to the perspective and when I hit the space bar it goes into that particular window okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cube okay so in, with this cube okay I'm going to go ahead and basically scale that down to the thickness of what I think that leg should be okay I'm going to go ahead and move it into place here where I think it should be and I'm going to go ahead and see my look at my reference here that I have and get that scaled up a little bit or scaled down again you you will have control over the exact dimensions of this but the idea here is not to get it exact okay but to get you comfortable moving and scaling these objects okay that's what's important so um, if, if I sc scroll out here I want you to go ahead and get as close to that size as you can okay all right now I'm gonna go and you can see that's really small so I'm gonna go to the front view so please go to the front view and I want you to hit the W key and just move it up so the bottom of the cube is on this line right here okay now this line right here is a little thicker than the rest you can kind of see that right so I want the bottom and that's basically the floor of our table the floor right here okay so the X Y and Z is zero 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 so that's the center of our scene that's how we know that's the center if I go to the top view you can see that that's the center of the scene too so you can see these thick lines are intersecting in the center okay right from the front view I want to right click over the object and go to vertex I'm going to marquee select that means I'm taking my holding my middle my excuse me my left mouse button down and marquee selecting the top of these uh, vertices I'll do that again real quick so if I'm in selection mode it looks like that and if I right click over anywhere with that selected and click on vertex then I can marquee select the top I can hit the W key and move them up okay and I'm going to zoom in I'm using my middle mouse button scroll wheel and scrolling that I'm just kind of scrolling the, the the middle mouse so I can zoom in and out you can also hold the alt key and the um, right mouse uh, button down so holding the alt key and the right mouse button down lets you scale too into your scene we want to get fairly close and we want to just kind of move that up to meet the other the top piece okay all right now with the bottom we're going to go ahead and marquee select the bottom and we're going to hit the E key oh excuse me the R key for scale and scale that down now again I'm going to turn mine on kind of gives me a takes lets me know where I'm at with this there we go okay there we go and then we're done with the legs so you can see in perspectives go ahead and turn that off in perspective you can see that that looks pretty good all right now the top is pretty simple let's go or the get the get it all duplicated we're going to duplicate this over we don't have to create another one we just duplicate it because they're all the same all the legs are the same which is kind of cool so I'm going to hit the Q key that gets us out of that tool so we got W which is move E for rotate R for scale and Q for just selection mode so I can select the tabletop selection mode is Q right so what we're going to do is I'm going to do control or excuse me shift hold down the shift key hold it down and then hit the D key once and then hit the W key and move that object so I just duplicated it so it's shift D okay now I'm gonna marquee select these two by holding down my left mouse button and 
scrolling, just kind of, not scrolling, but just kind of dragging that box, and that will select both of them. Or you can just select one, hold the shift key and select the other, okay? And that will select them both. And of course you can move them around if you want to. I'm gonna do control Z, which is undo. Now I'm gonna do a shift plus D. Okay, and then I'm gonna move those over. Okay, just like that. All right. I don't really need to to know. I don't have to get it exact, but that is the table. I don't I really don't need my reference anymore. That's my table. Okay, great. All right, so we'll come back to the next video, um, and I, I'll see you then.